In the question stem, we learn that we have 2 times 32, or 64 total classes. We also learn that we only have 37 teachers. And we learn that each of those teachers teaches either one or two or three classes. And our job is to find the minimum and the maximum number, the maximum, minimum or maximum possible number of teachers who could teach three classes. So for minimum maximum questions, one often very good strategy is just to work with the answer choices. To, uh, uh, to, to, to plug in the numbers and, and, and see if they work. So if we're looking for the minimum, if we're just plugging in these possible numbers for the minimum number of teachers who could teach three classes, would it make sense to start with the low numbers or the big numbers? Well, it'll make a lot more sense to start with the small ones, right? That way, as soon, if we start with zero, and then if that doesn't work, go to one, and if that doesn't work, go to two, uh, uh, if we go that way, then as soon as we find one that does work, we know definitively that that is the minimum. So let's start with the little ones. Let's start with zero. We are now pretending that there are exactly zero teachers teaching three classes. And I'll organize this information with, with a little chart. I care about uh, uh, where I'm distributing these teachers, and I care what that means for the number of classes. So if I have zero teachers teaching three classes, well, that accounts for exactly zero of my classes. And now I've got to distribute my 37 teachers to the one class group, let's say, and the two class group. And somehow I've got to distribute in such a way that I end up with 64 classes. And if I have to get to 64 classes with only 37 teachers, well, it makes sense that I'm going to have quite a few of them teaching two classes. So actually, to get the logic going, let's just let's just see what happens if I put them all there. Let's say all 37 of our teachers are teaching two classes, and then I have zero teachers teaching one class. What does this mean for the number of classes? Well, zero teachers teaching one class means that group accounts for zero of my classes, and 37 teachers each teaching two classes means that that group accounts for 37 times 2, or 74 of my classes. And actually, we already have a problem, don't we? We need, we need our total number of classes to be 64, and distributing our teachers this way, we end up with 74 teachers. But actually, we can, we can use this and follow this logic to try to, get, try to get a distribution that does work. Our number of classes is too big by 10. We've got 10 too many classes. So somehow, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna check whether the zero works, I've got to move teachers around here between one class and two classes to reduce the number of classes by 10. Right now, each of these guys is teaching two classes. So basically, what I have to do is I have to go to 10 of them and take away one of their classes if I'm gonna reduce this number by 10. Um, and actually, maybe we could even even stop there as soon as we say, oh, well, that that would do it. That would be possible. And there'd be some set that works. Uh, if I if I uh, um, shift 10 of these guys over here, this will go down by 10 and I'll have the right number. And I know it is possible to have zero and uh, we'd be making some progress. If you're if you're not completely confident, we can keep playing with the numbers. We can say, well, what does happen if I move 10 of these two class teachers to the one class teachers? What does happen? This 37 becomes a 27, and this 0 becomes a 10, and these numbers are no longer valid. So 27 teachers each teaching two classes means those that group accounts for 54 classes, and 10 teachers each teaching one means that that group accounts for 10, and it sure enough, uh, uh, it does work. 10 plus 54 is 64, and I've got I've got a distribution that works, 37 teachers teaching 64 classes, and that all started with testing this zero for the number of teachers teaching three classes, and because that was the smallest option available to us, we now know that is the minimum possible value for the number of teachers teaching three classes, and that means that C, D, and E are gone. And we can start 
start thinking about the maximum. We now know that the maximum is either 13 or 14. So which one should we test first? Well, I guess it, it makes sense if we're looking for the maximum now to start with the maximum number. In fact, here, because there's only two options, we're only going to have to test this 14. If it works, then we do know that that is the maximum possible number. If it doesn't work, we'd know it would be a smaller number and the only option would be uh, 13. So let's test it. Let's say there are 14 teachers. I guess I'll, I'll redo these labels. Teacher column and the classes column. Now we're saying 14 teachers, each teaching three classes. That's going to lead to a lot of classes. That'll be 14 times three or 42 classes. And where do the rest of my teachers go? How many teachers do I have left, first of all, to distribute between the, the one class group and the two class group? Well, I've got 37 altogether. 14 of them are in the three class group. That leaves 37 minus 14 or 23 teachers to distribute here and here. And again, last time we sort of applied some logic to get a starting place. Uh, uh, let's apply similar logic here. I've already got a lot of classes taken care of. In fact, we can think of it this way. Right now, we are trying to maximize the number of teachers to teach three classes. I guess that means we're going to want to minimize the number of classes we get from these other teachers. So if we are going to minimize the classes from these two groups, do we want more teachers in the one class group or the two class group? Definitely the one class group, right? So let's see what happens if we put all 23 of them up here in the one class group. And that would mean we have zero over here in the two class group. Well, for our number of classes, zero come from the two class group and 23 teachers each teaching one class means we get 23 classes taken care of by the one class group and this all together leads to what total number of classes would be 23 plus 42 or 65 and that is a problem we need we need 64 classes, and we found that when we put 14 here and tried to make our numbers work, we got 65. So let's think about this for a second. Does that prove that 14 doesn't work? Well, actually it does, right? When we were distributing this 23 in here, we were, we were consciously trying to minimize the number of classes we got out of here, and the minimum number of classes we were going to get was when we maximize the number of teachers in the one class group. So actually, given that there's a 14 down here, this is the minimum number of classes we could get from those other 23. And that led to a total number of classes that was too big. Actually, that I, I, I want to emphasize that that logic we used there is, is frequently useful logic on minimum maximum questions, especially if you're working with answer choices. When you're minimizing or maximizing one thing, often the most useful thing to do is to think about what else you're minimizing and ma or maximizing in order to minimize or maximize uh, the other thing. Uh, so here, because we said we want as few classes as possible from this group, we know that we can't go down any further. We can't move these teachers around and get fewer classes. If you're not convinced, you can you can think about it, right? If we if we're going to stick with this 14 here and try to reduce the number of classes we get by moving teachers around, well, as soon as I move one of these 23 to the two class group, well, that's basically just adding a class. If I had one here and 22 here, that would be adding a class to one of these guys, and I'd end up with a 66 down here, and that would be even further away from the number that we want. So actually, we've proved that it's not possible to have a 14 down here, uh, 14 teachers teaching three classes. So that is not our maximum possible number of teachers. That means B is not our answer, and that means 13 must be the uh, maximum possible number of teachers for three classes, and we don't need to test it because we've eliminated everything else, and we click A and get our points.